You know, I have something to admit to all of you today, and I don't care if I get crucified for it. Are you ready? Okay. I like bugs. Maybe they can be weird in some situations, but overall, I would rate bugs highly. A New York Times bestseller. But even though they're basically everywhere, you don't see much appreciation for bugs. In fact, in talks about the life on Earth, it's almost like people separate the idea of bugs from animals, and I bet that makes bugs feel bad. And it gets even worse when you go back in time. Extinct bugs get no love and attention in popular media, even though they are some of the oldest and most successful groups of animals ever. So why don't we talk about them? Mind you, we are about to cover about half a billion years of evolutionary history at a lightning speed, so blink and you may miss a cool insect or something. To get to the point, prehistoric bugs get so little attention for everything they've accomplished. Maybe for once on this channel, let's talk bugs. By the way, what is a bug? I'm not talking about true bugs, by the way, which, yes, are a thing. But really, when someone says bug, how far does that extend? For the case of this video, a bug to me is basically any arthropod, an animal with an armored, segmented body and limbs. Hey, you may disagree with this definition, Maybe later we can even have a glorious fight to the death over which bug definition is better, but for now, this is what I'm using. So firstly, what are the origins of bugs? Unsurprisingly, the bug has been a staple of complex life, basically since complex life was a thing. They've been around for as long as us vertebrates have, as well as a bizarre assortment of other organisms who all suddenly started evolving during the Cambrian period which occurred a ripe 541 to 485 million years ago. The Cambrian fits into a larger scale of time known as the Paleozoic Era, which as you will see shortly, arthropods will dominate. But for now, this far back, the border between bug and not bug gets hazy. Things are just that strange. For instance, look at Anomalocaris, literally meaning weird shrimp. You may think you're staring at some awkward walrus lobster hybrid but this is the Cambrian period's great white shark. This was the very first apex predator, with complex eyes for spotting prey, and tusk-like appendages used to grab agile creatures and move them towards their circular mouth. But are they bugs? Well, they seem to be relatively closely related, but unfortunately they might have lacked those hard-segmented bodies and proper limbs. What about Aegirocasis, which lived a few million years later? This was possibly the largest animal of its time measuring in at about 2 meters long, and like a whale of the early oceans, it was a peaceful filter feeder. But it also isn't a proper bug. In fact, it and Anomalocaris are both members of a group of animals called radiodonts, who are primitive ancestors of true arthropods, creatures who come fairly close to being bugs, and are honestly cool enough to go in the honorable bug pile. Well, what about this thing? Uh, wait, wait, what, what are you? Wh- which side is your face? Sorry, but too weird for bugdom. An example of one of the first actual arthropods is Sanctocaris, which as seen here does possess a tough segmented body with little arms. And although it may not look like it, this is an ancestor of arachnids, horseshoe crabs, and various other bugs. And hey, it's sort of hard to bring up early arthropods without mentioning the big one, trilobites. Trilobites are probably the most famous of any extinct arthropod, owing in large part because they are a common and recognizable fossil. But trilobites are more than just this fossilized shell will have you believe. Literally, as although rarely fossilized, trilobites did possess antennae and legs. But trilobites also had a wide range of diversity. They're actually the single most diverse group of extinct animals in the fossil record. There are 11 orders of trilobites, all with various shapes. The Agnostida, the Harpatida, the Nectospida, Here's one with a silly hat. Trilobites also lasted far beyond the Cambrian period, albeit slowly declining afterwards. But hey, let's go out of these early, early periods. Remember, you still have these freaks running around this far back. As we crawl farther into the Paleozoic, you begin to stumble into some more notably bug-like arthropods wandering the ocean. Don't worry, we still have weird ones. The shrimp-like animal Aquilonifer spinosis had little tethers to carry around other baby shrimp things. But most bugs got normal enough where some are even named after the ones of today. Just look at Eurypterids, maybe better known as sea scorpions. Just to clear it up, they aren't actually scorpions, or even arachnids for that matter, just closely related. 
It may also tell them apart from scorpions by the fact that they grow as large as tables. Most didn't get too big, but the biggest of the bunch, like Gigalopterus, reached well over 2 meters in length, giving it the venerable title of biggest bug ever. There were many more of these man-sized sea scorpions in the oceans, who might I remind you completely overshadowed the fish, who still were struggling to evolve jaws. By the way, heaviest bug ever goes to yet another sea scorpion, Hibertopterus. Hibertopterus was also really cool because fossilized trackways show this goliath could move on land, at least briefly. And I'll just leave this huggable fellow on screen for a while. Well, if these things were so successful, why didn't the sea scorpion ever transition to the not sea scorpion? Truth is that sea scorpions were actually beaten to land by other arthropods. While they dilly-dallied in the ocean, smaller bugs colonized the lands, such as Pneumodesmus, an early member of the myriapods, of which centipedes and millipedes derive. Along with Pneumodesmus, fellow primitive insects and arachnids conquered the lands, many millions of years before us lousy vertebrates even attempted touching dry dirt. As the Paleozoic continues, bugs adapted and prospered in a world becoming warm and forested. The primitive precursors to insects probably looked something like the silverfish of today, but by the Devonian period they eventually evolved their more signature insect traits, most notably by the mid-Devonian wings. Indeed, bugs were the first flying animals that the Earth has seen, yet another theater of life they easily beat vertebrates to. For arachnids, their first kin are represented by animals called trigonotarbids and lived some 400 million years ago. They got even more spider-like with the advent of Atercopus, this fuzzy guy, which had the unique spider trait of being able to produce silk, but did not possess the spinnerets which indicate true spiders. But hey, it had a funny tail. It would only be later when bugs would reach new levels of bugness, in the Carboniferous period. The Carboniferous is a time of abundant plants, swamps, and most importantly, oxygen. You see, a bug's size is believed to be controlled by the amount of oxygen they're able to breathe, as their body size and surface area correlates to how much oxygen they're able to take in. So when oxygen levels went up, terrestrial arthropod size did as well. Behold Arthroplora, a massive millipede which reached 2.5 meters in length and half a meter in width. Or even Meganeura, a predatory creature which reached more than half a meter in wingspan. That's a crow-sized insect. Meganeura may look like a dragonfly, but it is in fact from a closely related, now extinct group known as griffinflies. Another group of new flying insects would be the order Paleodictyoptera, a group of four-winged bugs who could attain wingspans of some 50 centimeters. The Carboniferous also introduced many now long-established bug orders. The first true spiders would spring up, along with grasshoppers and an order of insect called Dictyoptera, which include the precursors of cockroaches and mantises. Man oh man, who doesn't want to live in this world of giant and abundant insects? Oh, everybody? Well, on that note, let's skip ahead after the collapse of the Carboniferous period, where all of those trees and the oxygen they were supplying would disappear. The age of huge swamp bugs would evaporate with the Carboniferous, although in the Permian period, many ancient bug lineages would still prosper. The griffin flies would still grow to great sizes, represented by giant insects like Meganeuropsis. And hey, beetles would show up in the fossil record. But if you know your history, then you know what comes next. At the end of the Permian, and likewise the Paleozoic era, the Great Dying, an event I've already made a video on, killed an incredible percentage of life on Earth, including arthropods. The giant bugs would be wiped out, along with many other ancient orders. In the oceans, Eurypterids and Trilobites would also perish. And thus the great bug empire would be destroyed. And magnificent arthropods would never again dominate the earth, seas, and skies as they once had. It is here where I'll sort of hop through time because the amount of weird prehistoric bugs will begin to dip. Now this isn't because bugs got more boring or unsuccessful, but really because many familiar faces of our current bug population would begin to take over. For instance, by the Triassic period, the order of insects known as Diptera and Hymenoptera would appear, and many millions of years later in the Cretaceous, some Hymenopterums would become social creatures, big names in the insect world like ant and bee. Proper mantises also began populating the fossil record by the Cretaceous. 
Bugs of the time also have an evolutionary race with us vertebrates. Fleas would pop up on the back of Jurassic mammals, and in response to predatory birds evolving, the stick insects would also show up to vigorously sit around and look like plants. Yet there is still a fair share of unique and now extinct bugs. For instance, look at some of the weirdest ants of prehistory. In the early Cenozoic, you had the Titanomyra, which according to the reputable source, AntWiki, was a giant ant, the first discovered in the Western Hemisphere, with a fossilized queen being about as large as a hummingbird. You also had the crazy-looking Hell Ant, with one specimen being perfectly preserved in amber, attacking a poor cockroach. It appears the Hell Ant attacked in a unique way. Unlike the horizontal mandibles of other Hymenopterans, these ants' jaws move vertically, like ours, and would lock a prey item against its horns, showing that it has truly earned its name. Another interesting hunter of the Mesozoic was a cockroach named Manipulator, which possessed long appendages and a free rotating head that assisted in an active predatory lifestyle. It presumably killed with a set of long forelimbs covered in spines that could reach out and grab the victim. And of course, there's still spiders with tails running around for some reason. And now we come to the present day. And yeah, bugs maybe never recovered from their incredible position for most of the Paleozoic, but they are still the single most successful group of animals, by a landslide. I mean, invertebrates alone form 97% of all described animal species, and insects make up a massive proportion of those. Beetles alone form a quarter of all described animal species. Arthropods beat us to land and to the skies, and survived every major extinction event thrown at them. So next time, maybe humble yourself when thinking of bugs in prehistory, because although small, no matter what, bugs rule. Well, here's the end of the video. The topic of overlooked prehistoric insects was actually recommended to me by a fan. That person knows who they are, and I thank you for giving me this idea. As for everything else, the photos, videos, and artwork I used to make these videos are, as always, appreciated. Thank you for watching till the end, and... See ya.